But first, we're asking what you want to see happen in the post office scandal, 0207862222. So Rishi Sunak has said the government is looking to exonerate postmasters wrongly convicted over missing money caused by faulty Horizon software. He described the scandal as an appalling miscarriage of justice. The key thing is that there were over 700 postmasters, by which we mean masters and mistresses, prosecuted. And we, it seems like we're grinding this out very slowly, Wilfred. Everyone is now totally seized with it because of the ITV drama. What do you want to happen? Mm. I wish I'd seen this drama, but the other thing is this. I hope that Rishi is not just saying things, that they really are going to pull the stops out to try and get this um, sorted out. And for me, this is an indication of that when you get an institution that is so large, it could have errors like this where they're relying on a computer system. And so the warning out to everybody is do not think that the computer is or is right. I do not understand why a simple human being couldn't have said, well, isn't it a bit odd that so many people are being accused? But well, they were that's all the told point. they that's were the, the, point, the only ones. That's the point. Yeah. As much as this was a computer error, it was a computer error hidden yeah. by a ring of people that would have known. And that's why I agree, full mm. exoneration. Or oh, chose Immediate. not to know. No, no, no. They, they knew what they were doing. Immediate exoneration is needed, compensation. Only 25 of those 700 prosecuted have been, uh, have had their convictions overturned. I, I, right? I think more than that, but let, let's, let, me just show, let me just show you some of the facts, okay? Because it's, <laughs> it's key, we sort of step back here. And, and here, the key thing, these are the people at the centre of it, right? Some postmasters and all ordinary People who got caught in this horrible thing, they did not do anything wrong at all. And the numbers to think about here are as follows, 99 to 2015, 99 uh, to 2015, the, the dates it happened, and 736, those were the number of people prosecuted, the sub-postmasters, 736 of them, based on information from a, a computer system called Horizon, which we'll come to. So some of these went to prison following convictions for false accounting, um, some have since died. They then, this was the moment after 20 years, they won a legal battle to have their cases reconsidered, but they were at that point, the prosecutions weren't quashed and there's still a public scan inquiry into the scandal, but lots of, of them are still fighting for money and to have their convictions overturned. And into the middle of this, and the reason we're talking about, we had this ITV drama, which is one of the, clearly one of the best dramas in TV history for the effects it's had. Here you see a scene where the actor Toby Jones is playing a postmaster, Mr. Bates, who says to the inspectors, if you want to look at my system, look through this glass screen. Otherwise, you're not seeing it. And, and these people exist in real life, okay? So here's a, a gentleman called Lee who went bankrupt. We're just little skin people, you know, we're just people from your village shop or, or your, you know, your local post office. And it's been really hard to drum up support. It's been very difficult to get people to believe. So they've had so much go wrong. There are some missing names though here. Fujitsu, who did this Horizon system that went wrong, here's the guy who runs it, Takahito Tokita. Where are they? They've got loads of money. Then what about this woman, Paula Venels? She's a CBE. There's a million people now signed a petition to have her CBE stripped. But then what about Adam Crozier? This is a high time. He told his story about it. He was involved as well as an executive. And finally, we'll mention judges who saw these cases come to court, a suit that, that clearly not clued up enough. Because as soon as the IT evidence came in from the computer expert, they said, oh, well, it must be right. So, so nobody had a chance of saying, there was a glitch, there was a bug, the system didn't work. So just 17 and a half million pounds has been paid out in full and final compensation to 30 victims. The Met Police are looking at potential fraud and the Prime Minister speaking about it. This has been an appalling miscarriage of justice, an appalling treatment of all the people affected. And it's right that they get the redress that they deserve. That's why the government has put in place three different compensation schemes that have already paid out almost £150 million to thousands of people who are affected. And we're keen to go as quickly as possible. More broadly, the Justice Secretary is also looking at other options for how we can provide uh, support for people. I can't preempt those findings, but we're keen to do everything we can because this was absolutely a Appalling. It should never have happened. We don't want it to happen again. So you can see here postmasters celebrating the, the um, 
success of their appeal outside court, the quashing of convictions en masse, but there are still convicted people. There are people who haven't seen very much money because it's all gone to lawyers. We're nowhere near the end of this. I mean, Marina, why don't they just say, look, every single one of these people needs to get five million quid and that's it? I think that's probably heading in the right direction. But, I, but I'm sorry, but I can't... This is so gut-wrenching. I remember starting to follow this story a while back. This is so gut-wrenching for me. Do you know what I want to see? As well as that, I want to see people behind bars. Because there well, is... Well, the Met has now launched is, an inquiry. Good. And it took an ITV drama. What do we need? An ITV drama into Russian interference, into the Brexit inquiry, into Prince Andrew, for the Met police to do stuff? Well, well this, th I will the say ITV drama, it, we've got to say, it's one of the most influential dramas in modern times. But it shouldn't have taken that. Th that Lee Castleton that we just saw, yeah. you know, the, the, the Royal Mail, uh, sorry, the post office spent £300,000 trying to squash that man in court. Mm. They devastated him. They banked him. And then they asked him. him for the money. And they asked him for the money, right? The fact is, there would have been a ring of people at the post office that knew. There were 700 people going, mm. I didn't, it's not me, I didn't do anything. They knew. They covered up to save their skins, to save their reputations, to save their salaries, to save their bonuses. They well, all they, well, they to trusted bars. that maybe they. So, Paula Venels, who's obviously going to be the person whose head is put on a pike here, mm. she, she may have thought the software worked because she had a load of IT people telling her, oh, no, it's not us. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, it's what, what it says is about, it's about the, the people at the top, whether that's the judges, whether that's the <laughs> management, squashing ordinary people. They had the power and they trust the system that obviously failed. There was no one within that sort of so hierarchy. We've said five million each. What about well, that? I, I don't have a problem. Well, I think it depends on how much you've suffered. It may be a lot more because when you listen to some of these stories, some terrible suffering, people losing their oh, lives. People died. It's Someone just Someone tried actually, to kill themselves. But oh, threw himself in front of a bus. So, so, but, but just let's think big here. Maybe you say to the post office, you are responsible for the biggest miscarriage of justice in modern times. Because remember, the post office acts as a police force as well. So, they, so, so you say you are going to, at the very least, have to close down and reopen under a new name. I would do that because at the end of the day, the post office is still run by the government. That's a failure of anything that's managed by the government. It's always going to be a recipe for disaster. Well, I don't, I don't, do you know what it is? No, I don't think we need that. No. Look, criminal investigation, you find out who are the people that made the decisions. There was a team of people, right, Computer Weekly, believe it or not, who, who Lee Castleton and Alan Bates actually went straight to because they were like, what do I do with the software problem? But these people Listen, don't on, have on, any on, responsibility. Computer Weekly, Computer Weekly reported that the post office put in a whole new team in their call centre to deal with sub postmaster and, and post mistresses calling to say what's going on with the, this. The reason well, it's going like, to be difficult. Let's pause. To tell yeah. them that it was they were the only person experiencing We've got a call. Let's, what's our first caller here? Who is it? <laughs> Michael from Carmarthenshire. Hello. Hi. Hello there. What needs to happen here, Michael? Well, uh, of course there should be criminal prosecutions. And it, it, it isn't just... Actually, it may be so angry I wrote to the Prime Minister, but it isn't just with what happened. It's the fact that the post office tried to cover it up. And Paula Reynolds is in another government department. The woman's obviously got no integrity. Why on earth was she given another government job well, she, when she's the she head there? of the post I thought office? She'd been, I thought she's basically been defenestrated from that, or is she still in there, is she? I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I don't know, but I thought, I understood from the paper she got another job, which is obviously she, wrong. She has. She's also a vicar as well, or, you know, assistant. Well, okay. Imagine going to her for forgiveness. Christ. Well, it's, but the thing is, it's all very well. We're, everyone's going to. She's obviously going to be destroyed. Good. That's a given, right? But the, what about Adam Crozier? What about him? What about the guy who runs Fujitsu, who keep telling the post office it's all Fujitsu, working fine? Fujitsu, who keep getting government contracts at least until the investigation is finished. Finished. Stop giving them government contracts. But if I had a Fujitsu calculator, I'd, I'd smash it with a hammer. But I don't think I do. So, <laughs> so, but Michael, what do we do? Because these poor postmasters are still waiting for money. A lot of them. Well, I mean, I think the government do. I, as I say, I wrote to Rishi Sunak about this because, um, you know, uh, he needs to step in and and uh, and sort this out, not just reimburse, but they need decent compensation. And okay. the post office needs to be investigated. Actually, it sounds not a bad idea, one of them say. It needs to be set up under another thing. It needs to be... And they shouldn't be their own police force. 
How no, could be stupid? No, They're no police force. Yeah, well, it's bonkers. Exactly, because they got an incentive to get prosecutions. Mm. Thank you, Michael, very much. After the break, more calls on this, whether there should be criminal charges in the post office scandal, whether the way to deal with it is to take every single person and just give them five million quid each. Although, would that end up with the post office having to close more branches? First, we're taking more calls on this. What next in the post office scandal? Do you want to see criminal charges? What about five million each? Do you simply shut the post office and reopen it under a new name? 0207 862 Rishi Sunak has said the government is looking to exonerate postmasters wrongly convicted over missing money caused by faulty Horizon software. He described the scandal as an appalling miscarriage of justice. We've got many, many calls on this. Let's speak to Nigel in Warwickshire. Hi, Nigel. Hi, hi, Jeremy. Yeah, it's perverting the course of justice. Uh, I'd rather like the Kangaroo Court House of uh, uh, Commons Privilege Committee, of course. But, yeah, judge, jury and chief prosecutor. That's completely a uh, uh, breach of natural justice. Well, they weren't judges. Of- Nigel, Nigel, the post office weren't the judge. They had to take it to court and then there were judges there. The judges were turned out to be clueless well, yeah, about but, IT. But, That's- they, they already removed them from their jobs. They, they treat them like criminals before they were proven guilty. And there was True. no guilt. There was no evidence of criminal activity. One iota, not mm. one. And they, they had direct access to their own, um, to, the, uh, to the post offices. They had access. Because I, I designed comm systems in those in the in Did that you? period. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the so this is one of the things that came out of the drama that I didn't know, is that somebody went in to see Fujitsu to see what's going on with your software, and in order to demonstrate it, the per- you'll love this, Wilfred. The person in Fujitsu said, "Have a look at this," and they went into an individual post office's account, and they they, they changed the figures, and the guy said, "You can't go into a post office's." books like that. So, and he said, yeah, we can do that with anyone in the country. That's right. So that's crazy, Nigel, right? Well, look, also, the, any, any uh, system errors, you get postings to suspense accounts. And they would have known the branches those postings were coming from, because that's what you do. You put a post ID for every post office. So therefore, they would have known that the postings of the suspense accounts related to the very people that they had wrongly uh, treated as criminals. Thank you, Nigel. So Alistair, you... Alistair in Edinburgh, what do you think should happen? Well, I, I think that if you consider the numbers, 736 were prosecuted, a further 200 were about to be prosecuted over the 13 and a half years means that 70 per annum were being uh, prosecuted and found guilty. Yeah. You take the period from 1985, say, to 2000, how many were there then? That uh, clearly shows there's a massive difference. And for the uh, directors of the post office not to investigate the reason for the difference in the numbers is clearly criminal. And for I think it was Jowett who was the CEO of the post office to say smugly, oh, they're too late to get us now. It's ridiculous. And as far as I'm aware, that's not the case because you're never um, time delayed or timed out if you've committed mail fraud. Oh, is that Every right? letter so- sent to the GPO sub postmasters and mistresses was mail fraud. That's about 6,000 cases well, well, that are all mail, guilty of. I, th- I think mail fraud's an American crime for a start. So, so well, I, if you, no, I don't, I don't think British, we have that crime the in this country. Set up, it's set up so that... You, the, and the, <clears throat> the directors of the post office set it up. They've got their own set of laws which are okay. incorporated within British Oh, I law. see. OK, thank you. And in Hertfordshire, you were a customer of a, uh, one of the post offices affected, were you? Yes, I was. And I saw the lady, the police came in and arrested the lady behind the counter. You saw it happen? Yes. Oh, they told everyone, heartbreaking. And they told everyone in the queue heard what she'd done. And what, so they said you are charged with or something, did they? Yeah, yeah you've taken £50,000 out of the post office. Mm. Well, I mean, it was police... She was arrested. It's... My son was three, sitting in his buggy, crying because he's heaps bored stiff. And just, and just uh, to, to illustrate this, your son would now be about 23, would he? No, he's, he's just sadly died. He's not with us anymore. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, gosh, to, to be arrested by, by the police or by the post office yeah. team? In front of all the customers. And we were there sent cashing, 
sudden I passed the discussion, I was getting my child benefit, but I couldn't get it because they arrested her. Mm. What do you want to see happen, Anne? I want the, I want the, I want the government prosecuted as well. Well, they, they, they should be ashamed of that. They've just woken up because how dare these people make a documentary about it? Yeah, I mean, we, I, I think I, the we, government have just woken up now. Like, they should be ashamed of themselves. I think you know, it's interesting. We've got to it's, stop because, having these scandals. And, how, and the government are feeling, how dare these post office people shame us? Well, OK, it was done on... Most of it happened under a Labour government, for a start, so yeah, yeah, well, well, that's Labour fine. Be, Arrest them as well. Brought, and that lady who's a vicar, she should be arrested. Well, they're, they're, that may Rageful. happen. That may, this is Paula Venels here. She's, she's, she's a vicar Rageful. and she's been uh, one of these people yeah. who's on that merry-go-round of the great and the good. And what getting, kind of world do we live in when you can commit a crime... And get on, try to get away with it. Well, we don't know if she's committed a crime, but Marina. This is why. This is why, and there needs to be a criminal investigation to find out who knew. You don't just shut down the whole post office. Mm. Loads of people work with post office and nothing to do with this. There would have been a, a, a ring of people that knew. Bear in mind, there was there were a few cases where the the people who were accused actually brought in IT experts to, to and they th that said, yeah, there's a problem with the software. And do you know what the post office did? Paid them off and made them sign NDAs. Mm. Well, guilt, guilt. It's disgusting. Fujitsu must have known. But, and that's but no, then... And also, there's a duty of care on Fujitsu. I work in tech, right? You do not release a piece of software to the market until it is 100% like ratified. There are betas and all sorts of testing versions of it. You, do, you don't think we can go back this far, Wilfred? Look, I think we're talking about things that happened 20 years ago. Hopefully, the systems we now have in place would mean that this sort of stuff could never happen again. But <laughs> one of the other peoples that I actually think <coughs> sounds accused are the legal systems, because actually lawyers are the ones who will take on causes to try and find out what's going on. These people were failed by everybody. Well, they the, failed by the, everybody. They lawyers have. should not have been prosecuted. Should, uh, I suppose lawyers have, are paid to make an argument. So the post office pay their lawyers to make an argument that this person is guilty. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say... And the lawyer what? takes the brief. But, but actually the lawyer says, should say, well, I don't think, that's, I don't think they're guilty. Well, no, what I think it is, is because it's technology, there wasn't enough people who knew, so therefore they didn't know how yeah, to address right. these problems legally. So these poor people, when they went to a lawyer, because they also with evidence is very clear that, you know, this was, the money was there, so there's nothing to defend. Let's talk to Stephen East Yorkshire. Hi, Steve. Good morning. It's infuriating, this one, isn't it? Yeah, um, first of all, <coughs> they should be prosecuted for theft from the from the post masters. <coughs> who, who should be? Who who do you prosecute, Steve? Um, well, the, the the woman at the top for a start. So Venels. And second, second, secondly, yeah. uh, any compensation should come from their pockets, not the public's. We shouldn't be paying compensation to these poor people. I agree they should get about five million each, but met the ones who are who, who put in that situation, sell their houses and let, 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 them, let them pay for it. Yeah, but they need more money than Paula Venels has got, or, or for that matter, the, you know, the other guy. Well, if, if, you're raking, if you're raking about a dozen Look. people who have uh, been involved, yeah. Well, well Fujitsu, Fujitsu's got loads of money. Go on. The post office, when it was telling people that they owed sub, sub postmasters and mistresses, told people they owed £30,000, £90,000. They, they didn't care that they didn't have no. that money. They said, we're clawing it back anyway. We should do the same to Paula Vanells and whoever has found mm. Well, I'm sure she'll end up with nothing, I, I guess. She's not the we'll only see. one to blame because see, over that period of uh, time, you have these people who do management for a period of time and they move on. So that's why it's going to be really difficult. It's OK, but it they down. can find out who's to blame here because yeah, it was all can. documented. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for all your calls. I'm well aware of the strength of feeling all coming really out of this drama.